energy. I am on the board of Film Farm and also on the programming committee. I have no other really well things to say, but I'm going to go fast because we're going to start the show. Um, I'm so happy to be co-presenting this program of Raji summarizing his films with my friend and fellow filmmaker Mike Stoltz. And we're so grateful for our partnership with this space, 2220 Arts and Archives and to be in person together celebrating this work finally, hopefully as safely as possible. Just as a reminder on that note, please try to keep your masks on. It's part of, we would like everyone to feel safe. I know some people have drinks, so just take your sips quickly and put your masks back on. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so before I get into all of the wonderful things that we have planned for this evening, I want to tell you a little bit about Film Forum. So if you are new to Film Forum, we are the longest standing um, organization in Los Angeles showcasing non-commercial, experimental, and progressive film and video art. And we have been around since 1947, so this makes us in our 22nd, no, not our 22nd year. We've been around for 47 years. Uh, one of the wonderful things that we started in the pandemic, despite all of the things that were so challenging, was uh, virtual screening. So that really allowed us to expand so much more widely. We also invited people to program with us. So we were also able to expand our, just the you know, kind of breadth of the kind of work we're showing. So we continue to iterate on this. And if anyone's ever interested in knowing more about the forum, you can visit our website at www. Film Forum, LA, wait, sorry, let me start that. <laughs> www.lafilmforum.org. Um, one of the things I'll mention is next weekend on Sunday, we have a matinee screening of films by Sandra Lahiri, the British experimental film, feminist filmmaker. And I'll also mention that evening here at 2220, there will be a performance of experimental Japanese, a, a Japanese trio and <laughs> electronic gamelan. So that's also very exciting. And you can find more about that show and more on the 2220 website and Instagram. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing I want to tell you is that this is a screening, but we've kind of changed the formatting a little. We're going to have a, a screening, it's 83 minutes about a little bit more, and then a conversation between Mike and Raji, and we will be witnessing that conversation and listening, and then to participate in that conversation, you have to stay afterwards and commune with food and drinks after the screening. So please stay, it's part of the experience to be with Raji, his family, his friends, and his community of filmmakers. I think this is really important and in true South Asian style to really, you know, food is at the center of this experience. And Raji's mom is here. <laughs> so tonight we're gonna to be looking at seven of Raji's films and five of those are Los, uh, US premieres. We're really, really fortunate to be showing all this work together. Um, and to, to be able to look at the body of work of someone who's very, very prolific. Raji has more than 40 films, I think, on his, or something like that. And to be able to look at this work all together, I think is something profound. I don't want to say too much about the films, but what I will say is that <laughs> I'm so moved by how Raji's films are really a meditation and memory in the present. And so this experience of watching the films allows us to be in the past and the present at the same time. Um, each film is singular and additively there is a truth that kind of evolves and it's a kind of tender and ultimately persistence against the gaze of colonialism. And Raji's films create a visual language unto themselves, one that functions really as resistance and that felt experience is truly a gift. Um, I will now also say that after today, on Wednesday, Raji's 12 more of Raji's films, a few overlaps, but 12 films will be showing at Coaxio, another venue of experimental art and film and video, 
and um, through a program called Shadow Kitchen. So if you want to find out more about that and if you're really inspired, you should check that out. So, again, I'm going to remind everyone, keep your masks on. <laughs> that part's really important. And without further ado, I would love to invite Raji to the stage to say hello. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for coming out. I know this isn't the safest place to be <laughs> right now, but um, I just want to say thank you for risking your lives to watch <laughs> seven Sri Lankan experimental films on a Sunday. <laughs> Not a bad way to go, right? <laughs> um, so enjoy. My name is Mike Stoltz. Um, I'm really excited to be here in conversation with Raji after seeing these films. Um, when I watch, you know, when we watch these films together, um, they really kind of allow us to be in more than one place at once, whether that's geographically or in a past, present, future sense, or even in a kind of intimate and up close or um, far away and kind of zoomed out sense. Um, what's so exciting for me watching these films is that I feel like, you know, there's an infinite amount of new combinations of images and sound and structures. Um, there's kind of this sense of discovery at every turn when I watch them. And I can't help but thinking that a lot of that excitement and discovery is also shared with the filmmaker who's putting these things together. Um, I guess to start off, I'm really curious before we get into kind of the nuts and bolts of how you're putting together these pieces and creating experiences for us, and also how you're filming them. Um, I'm really curious because I've never actually gotten to ask you this, but how did you come to filmmaking? You know, what was kind of the moment where you thought you could do that, or when you maybe um, tried to do that or came from another form? Yeah. Um, well, I started out in illustration, um, but I got so bored with illustration um, that I wanted to find something new. But also, um, uh, my dad uh, had a very uh, long, protracted death, and uh, my refuge during that time was uh, watching a lot of films. Um, so uh, that kind of, um, I mean, I watched a lot, a lot of films um, because um, the library down the street uh, had free VHS rentals. So I mean, I, I, I was watching like John Waters when I was 12, 13. Like, uh, you know, I was watching Good Doctor, like all that stuff. Um, so that kind of got in my head. and. Illustration was so boring that, you know, I just gave it up. And, I mean, I wish I had a better, you know, like, no, 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 that's, great. that's, that's I just, what it was. I think it's always interesting. Into, you know, my mind wanders quite easily, so I just wandered into another thing. And I don't know if, you know, I don't know if my mind, my mind will wander into something else, I don't know, but um, so far, so good. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm really um, curious. We talk, you know, we talk about this a lot. I know for you, it's kind of um, because it's your life and your practice. It's kind of second nature. But for me, and I think for a lot of viewers, it's fascinating thinking about. Um, for so long, you were unable to travel back to Sri Lanka, and then when you did, which was almost a decade ago, um, you were able to go there and gather like an incredible amount of footage, right? Like so many of the pieces that we saw tonight incorporate footage from that trip. And we're talking about, like, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago, kind of at the beginning of your making films. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, well, I sort of knew what I was doing. Um, I didn't know the technical aspects so much, but, you know, um, it wasn't like I shot a mass of footage um, 
you know, everything was very specifically, you know, carefully executed. Um, you know, and I, I spent time with each project. I don't know if, I didn't know it was gonna be a film or not, you know, I don't know, but, um, um, yeah, but the technical aspects, I just took a camera there, um, and for some reason I put an MR fake lens on, um, on the digital camera. Well, no, I, I know the reason, I actually didn't know the reason. Um, well, even before that, you know, I had this sense of, like, um, this desire to challenge, um, um, yeah, the graphic image, and to play with that, and to deconstruct that, um, you know, in the context of the colonial case and all that stuff. But I didn't know how to make a film, really, you know. Um, but nonetheless, I took a camera there, you know, with those ideas, and, um, I was just shooting a lot, playing around a lot with my family, yeah. improvising, writing, you know, during the morning, um, before I knew who Hong San Su was. Mm -hmm. I would write in the morning and, and shoot with my family. Um, but, yeah, yeah. And you got, you got to spend a good amount of time yeah. there and really work with your family as performers yeah. and kind of as far as I understand, it was really an opportunity to reconnect, or in some cases, connect for the first time as an adult with a lot of people. Yes, yeah. I mean, my mom, it's weird, she's usually not here, so I can not say anything. <laughs> um, my mom doesn't like to talk about her childhood. Oh, she's very close to us, so that was kind of what spurred, you know, this trip out there to her village to kind of explore. and. Um, you know, talk to the people in her life during her childhood and kind of uh, <laughs> report back yeah. to my siblings, but in these films. Um, any other stuff I'll take to the grave, but you know, what 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 she allowed is in the films. But, but even the stuff, you know, you can feel it in the film. I mean, a lot of, I mean, some of the films are silent, you know. And different reasons for that, but some of the reasons it's like I want you to focus on the figurative aspects of the bodies and the implications. Of it, you know? mm -hmm. um, but that was that was part of the impetus for going out there too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and um, I guess you know you're sort of mentioning that already, and we get that in a lot of the title cards and the pieces. But I think this idea of each film kind of working almost as an allegory or reimagination re or restaging of these kinds of familial stories, um, in some cases almost like the myths or legends we create around the family and the way that those stories get passed down, even if it's, even if they're only going from one generation to the next, right? And especially as, as young adults, as we grow up and we sort of, um, you know, see the world with our own eyes for the first time. And I think, um, especially in the pieces where you kind of give that to us up front, you know, instantly frame the piece and tell us what's happening, but then we get to sit with it and spend the next 10, 12, 14 minutes kind of making those connections for ourselves. Um, you know, as a viewer, it's really exciting. And I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about, as a maker, how that's exciting for you. And also thinking about, right, you've got this kind of hard drive of footage that you've been going back to now for, for quite a few years, right? Yeah. It's finished, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, I kind of created a, like my own archive of found footage um, that I was, I mean, actually, I didn't think, I didn't even look at it for like five years. Um, it was only when I went to grad school where I started to play around. professors who are here who helped me out um, quite a bit. Um, just kind of, it's hard to even look at some of the, it's actually hard to watch these films. Um, but at the, yeah, I mean, at the time it was hard to look at the footage. And so I, I did, like, didn't even want to watch, watch it. Um, but you had to make films in grad school, so I, I, you know, I was forced to make some films. Um, and, uh, you know, I kind of put me in that, put me in that space. 
Oh, what was your, sorry, I went on a tangent on some. No, no, it's okay. I think that actually um, gets to the next point that I want to get to, but this idea of distance, you know, physical distance, temporal distance, right? Um, returning to where you're from, but after a long time away, and then thinking about this footage kind of sitting on a shelf and returning to it with, like you said, treating it more like archival footage, right? Not being as, obviously, a limited amount of it, but it doesn't feel like in any of these edits that the footage is precious, right? You're taking extreme liberties, um, you know, just in the way that the footage kind of accumulates within the frame, questions of frame line, color, positive, negative, saturated, desaturated, you know, again, this idea of kind of being in more than one place at once, visually, and then definitely sonically, too. Um, and I'm curious, yeah, how that, that sense of distance and remove kind of informs these stylistic choices. I mean, it's manifested in so many films, I mean, in the, in the form, and uh, I mean, in Show Me Other Places, and, and, and so many, but it's, um, it, it, but these things, it's, it's like a device, you know, I use it for, to talk about different things, like in, like in Show Me Other Places, um, I was kind of interrogating my own gaze <laughs> uh, as a filmmaker, yeah, and, you know, looking at even my own footage, you know, and the responsibility I have as a, a person, a filmmaker creating nonfiction images. Because these are images that have been used to destroy people like me, you know? uh, and you know that's something I've been super conscious about for for a while. But, um, yeah, I mean that's just a that's just a, a, a thread, I guess, that runs through a lot of my work. Um, and some, I mean, I mean, sometimes like um, um, it takes someone to point it out, even to, for me to even notice. <laughs> uh, because like, it, it, it's just something I, I do in my work. It's, it's so um, ingrained into my aesthetic. You know? well, thank you for that. What, um, I guess maybe on the flip side of that, though, I do feel like there's a lot of um, levity and joy to these pieces, you know, and, and a kind of sense of play and discovery happening. Someone said sensual once. Yeah. I, I've said, very strange. I've said, said sensual. I think I, said I, sensual. I think I interchanged that with like sensory or No, more than one person has yeah. said that. Um, but, but with that sense, but I do feel like there's this sense of kind of play and discovery yeah. happening as well. Like, you know, again, these films can kind of be in more than one place at once. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, you know, especially when you get you're living in California again, you know, you're, you're growing up, um, time is passing, you know, do you have a kind of a sense of discovery surprise when you're making these works, you know? And, and it certainly feels that way watching them, but I'm curious, like, within the process. Um, yeah, it doesn't, I mean, a lot of these films, I, I, I forgot, I mean, they were shot so long ago, I'm like, I, I don't even recognize the person who shot that. Uh, and I'm like, why'd you shoot it that way? But it was me, like, 10 years ago, you know? I mean, if I hadn't edited it back then, it would've been such a shit movie, you know? Like, bad, I think. Well, not bad, but like, different. A different movie. You know, yeah. different, different, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Let's say different. Um, but it's, um, I mean, it's, like I make, I make so many <laughs> films, um, but like they linger in my in my mind. You know, I'm always like thinking about these things and editing these films in my head. Um, like many of these films, I edited in like two days, three days, because it's like um, you know, I've been thinking about them for so long. Oh, yeah, and, and I think even in the films we saw tonight, um, you know, it's so exciting.
to recognize people or characters from previous films and new iterations as the films go on. Um, and also to recognize material, you know, like a, a sort of kind of shooting that gets, that reappears throughout. Um, and I guess I'm just curious, each of these pieces really feels like it has its own kind of logic, its own set of, set of decisions, um, and its own set of questions that you're asking, challenges to the audience. Um, you know, do you feel like when you were making these was one piece sort of a reaction to the piece that it preceded it, or, or kind of, you know, yeah, I'm just curious about this decision to have each project feel, feel and look really different in some ways from the one before. I mean, I mean, that's a, that's a tough question. I mean, I, it isn't like, it's sort of a reflex. It's a natural thing. Um, I mean, some, some works, like, like Show Me Other Places is a rea reaction to all my work. Um, and some of my footage from other films are in that, it is in that piece. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think I, it's not, it's not really a conscious thing when I'm, I'm making, making the work, you know, it's a, uh, um, it's like, almost like after the fact, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I guess I'm reacting to other works, but, um, yeah, it's not, it's not really a conscious, conscious thing. You know, it's, I shot, um, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you for that. I mean, yeah, I think as a viewer, um, and obviously watching them all at once after they're finished, as opposed to mm -hmm. piecing them out over the year, it's gonna feel different. Um, I mean, they were devised, like, very differently, you know, right? I would spend three months doing one film, oh, not three, three weeks, three or four weeks doing one film, um, and not thinking about any other film, and then, you know, moving on to another project. Uh, but I didn't even think, Some of these things, I didn't think they would be films. Like, the Spectre watches over her, which uh, is funny. I always like, like to see the reaction of people when they see that film. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, I just wanted to recreate an exorcism that was performed on my mother. I just wanted to see it, you know? Um, and uh, the, the filming was kind of an, <laughs> an afterthought. I was like, oh, I guess I should film this. Um, <laughs> But, but it, you know, it ended up being almost like it crystallized everything I wanted to say as a filmmaker. But it was like, it didn't, you know, it didn't happen in such a planned way. Right. But, you know, it, it's, it, everything kind of fell into place with that film, you know? Like the, like the exorcism and the expulsion of a, colonial presence, and then like, um, and the way I kind of um, treat the image, you know, that's kind of um, rejecting uh, a neo-colonial presence, you know, that's present in documentary film, <laughs> in all, all media. Right. Well, that's, that, that film specifically, you know, there's, at certain moments, there's only just the suggestion of the image, right? It's yeah. really challenging, but also inviting the viewer to kind of make those connections with the yeah. image. Yeah. It's like an ingwa. It's a Rorschach. Right. Rorschach. Um, and uh, yeah, that one, that one's a good. That, it, it worked out really, really well. Even though, like you know, I just wanted to see something from my mom's past that I didn't know about. Yeah. Yeah. But you know. Sometimes these things work work themselves out, um, but you know I, I I put so much trust in my family, you know, uh, as performers and to give me ideas and uh, like you know, a lot of um, a lot of scenes in like the eyes of summer and stuff is just stuff that um, I 
tell I would tell a family member to do something and they, they wouldn't do it properly. But it's great. It's better than what I asked them. Yeah, I think that Always. familiarity, trust, yeah. intimacy, you know, it comes through like, yeah. the moment someone appears on the screen in those yeah. films in a way that we can imagine would be much more difficult if, you yeah. know, if these weren't uh, canon or familiar folks. Yeah. Um, I do want to be mindful of time and maybe just bring up one last question, which um, doesn't necessarily have to do with what we've seen tonight, but I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what you're working on now or how much you can tell us about um, future projects, because like you said at the beginning, this sort of series of works feels done for you and that you're um, working on creating new footage. Well, I'm in, I'm in the throes of my first feature film. Um, in this <laughs> There's not much I can say about it um, at the moment for um, political reasons. Um, it's not just that, but you know, I'm in the middle of it. But I think um, um, it's almost like the culmination of everything you saw here. Uh, and I think I'm pushing myself um, in terms of Polemically and formally, I think I'm pushing myself. Um, <laughs> I'm just, been, just trying to talk about it without like saying. But it's uh, you know it's it's about um, um, you know, this socio political conditions in Sri Lanka um, uh, from the past. <laughs> Said, maybe maybe this is a good stopping point, but um, we are, you know, for those of you that can still hang out, we're gonna move back into the bar. Delini is reading tarot in the back. There's food. There's more drink. Um, right. Um, so yeah, my sister will be reading tarot, and uh, I, yeah, Sri Lankan food for everyone, um, and we can. I would like to discuss these films or whatever. Even my feature uh, over food, <laughs> as we do, uh, you know, uh, in, in our homes. Um, so uh, don't leave. Don't leave. Stick around and uh, you know, eat some food and uh, let's let's chat. Yeah. Well, yeah, and thank you to Tuni and Film Farm for making yeah. this happen. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much for having me.